Welcome to Planet Sleep. I'm your host, Josh. And tonight, we'll be heading back out to outer space. With seven rings to rule them all, Saturn has intrigued us Earth dwellers for centuries. It's the only planet whose rings we can see from space. But beneath its beauty hides the chaotic mysteries of worlds so distant from our own. And the moons alone hold their own stories of the cosmos. This journey to Saturn is going to be unlike anything else we've ever experienced. Before we go, I wanted to remind you to check out my CBD brand, Iron Love Wellness. CBD is a great supplement to take, especially before bed. For me personally, I take four CBD gummies before I go to bed every night. And ever since I started doing that, I sleep so much better. I feel like my sleep is deeper. My dreams are more vivid. And I wake up feeling more refreshed than I did before. So if you want to check out ourlovewellness.com, I'd really appreciate it. You can get 10% off with code Planet Sleep. But let's get ourselves prepared for this journey into the great unknown. All the way out to Saturn we'll be traveling. We need to prepare our heart, our mind, and our spirit for the adventure that lays in front of us. Let's take a few moments to either sit down somewhere or lie down if you can and just close your eyes listening to the music and taking a few big deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth it's important that we stay calm as it's a long ride out to Saturn I'll give you a few moments to just relax Are you ready? Good. Let's begin this journey to Saturn. In the distant sky, Saturn glides between the stars. From afar, the planet rests along its calm trajectory around the sun and it stays on the invisible rails of its orbit within our solar system. Its surface gives off a beige glow, surrounded by the spiral of its seven rings that spin at 40,000 miles per hour. From so far away, its figure gives off a serene relaxation and provokes the deep wonders of space. But the closer you get, the more complex this planet becomes As you lift off the green and blue bed of Earth, you head towards the stars. Twinkling lights pass you by, and Earth becomes only a memory far behind you. To the naked eye, Saturn matches the bright light of a simple star. But the further you reach into the cosmos, the clearer its expressions reveal themselves. From hundreds of miles away, Its surface is no longer a blank beige canvas, but a plane of churning emotion. A polar storm bigger than the United States tears across the surface. Flashes of lightning hide beneath the clouds, and the force of electricity is up to a million times more powerful than a lightning storm here on Earth. Above its surface activity, seven rings form beautiful circles around its center and the complexities of its true nature begin to unfold before you.
three planets from the Earth. Saturn is only a hint of light in the night sky. But here floating through the stars, the Earth becomes a hint of light behind you. and Saturn engulfs the canvas of space. 890 million miles from the sun, Saturn's ring reflect the light of the solar system. The disks wrap perfectly around its celestial body, demanding to be understood. It's known as one of the most beautiful planets of our solar system, and rightfully so. And it's many of our first experiences when seeing a planet through a telescope. Although through a simple telescope it only looks like a sleepy planet with not much going on, it's anything but that. Beauty is only skin deep, and the mysteries of the planet beg for answers. As you move closer to the surface, it's clouded by strange activity. If you were to ever step foot on Saturn, you would freeze instantly. Plus, you would fall into a cosmic disaster of material, because there is no solid surface of Saturn. The planet is a giant hunk of hydrogen and helium that moves around its axes. The shape is in constant motion. The planet spins so rapidly that it bulges at the center, like a chef tossing pizza dough. This is why it's called an oblate spheroid. Saturn is also the second largest planet, and 750 times the size of Earth. But strange enough, its gravity is weaker. A 150-pound human would only weigh 137 pounds on Saturn. The planet has such low density, it's actually the only planet in a solar system less dense than water. The gases take up most of the space. Far out in Saturn's orbit, the sun looks much smaller here. For this planet to travel around the sun, it takes almost 30 Earth years. But it rotates so fast, one day is only 10.6 Earth hours. So how did this strange planet come to be? It was formed nearly 4.5 billion years ago. It gathered carbon dust from space bit by bit until eventually a rocky core formed at its center. Its core alone is several times the size of Earth. Its gravitational pull attracted hydrogen and helium gases which collapsed under gravity. The massive clouds of gas compressed and began rotating rapidly. It's the same way a professional ice skater spins. When they open their arms, their spin slows down and when they bring their arms towards their body, they spin faster. So as the gases collapsed towards the center, the planet of Saturn collapsed on itself and emerged from the mayhem. And then came the rings, 173,000 miles in diameter, wider than 21 Earths put in a row, yet they're incredibly thin, only 65 feet, so they appear like blades around the massive ball of gas, but they're actually made of billions of pieces of space material. This debris is countless hunks of icy rocks that range from the finest grain of sand to a large house, and these are all made of frozen ice. As they travel around Saturn, they smash into each other at incredible speeds. As they break into smaller particles, they become smaller and smaller, with time, and they reach speeds up to 40,000 miles per hour. A colliding particle traveling that fast would be like a point-blank shotgun blast, and the closer to the planet you are, the faster the rings spin. Some believe many of these rings were formed by space debris after Saturn's moons collided. Saturn currently has nearly 60 moons. And with that many orbiting the planet, it wouldn't be hard to imagine many colliding at any point in the last 4 billion years. As these moons collided, they broke apart, 
and over time they slowly whittle down to the soaring space material that now orbits the planet in beautiful disks. Galileo was the first astronomer to notice these rings, but he was never able to figure out what they were before his death. These rings became the focal point of the planet after their discovery, and many more scientists became intrigued. Forty-five years after Galileo's discovery, a Dutch physicist named Christian Huygens found an answer to the mystery. He discovered that it wasn't just one massive ring, but actually several rings. Over the next several centuries, we've discovered that there are seven different rings, alphabetized from A ring through G ring. You move towards the thin disk of space debris, and you notice the small gaps between disks. Not only are the rings separated, but they act slightly different from their neighboring rings. The farthest ring from the planet is known as the A ring, and this ring is faint and light passes through much of it. Next to it, B ring is large and dense filled with space material, while C ring is as faint as A ring and D-ring is nearly invisible. E, F, and G are so small that they're incredibly hard to see. And the only way we can understand things as far from Earth is through modern spacecraft and telescopes. The Cassini spacecraft launched on October 5th, 1997, and it was active for nearly 20 years. After finally reaching Saturn on July 1st, 2004, 13 of those years were spent orbiting around Saturn and studying the planet and its complex system. Upon arriving to the mysterious planet, so far away we were finally able to explore Saturn closer than we have ever seen it before. In its last several missions, Cassini flew into treacherous territory. These risky flights were held off until later in the mission because of their dangerous routes near the planet. These flights took Cassini into the atmosphere between the planet and the rings, dodging the space debris flying at 40,000 miles per hour. It performed 22 perilous dives in 2017, and it was able to take measurements of the gravitational tug of Saturn and its rings. It was the closest look of Saturn we've ever experienced. Since these rings are made of ice, they reflect the sunlight with great intensity. They are so bright that even if you're on the dark side of the planet, these rings are brighter than the Earth's moon. Even if we wanted to see the lightning beneath the clouds of Saturn, it'd be incredibly difficult because of how bright the planet is on all sides. As beautiful as they are, it's believed that these rings won't be around forever. The big question now is when will they disappear? Other planets like Neptune, Uranus, and Jupiter also have rings, but theirs are faint and thin. Saturns are bright and massive. So many scientists believe that these rings haven't been exposed to erosion for very long. They might even be relatively new. But if these particles become too small, they might be lost to the magnetic field. A way for the rings to survive is for a meteor to crash into the rings and add to the space material, but not many are sure this is likely. Still, these rings are what give Saturn its unique look, and Earth civilizations as early as 700 BCE took notice of these bright disks with the naked eye. Greeks later gave it a name, Kronos, after the god of harvest. Many believe this planet was visible in the sky during the harvest season, so they thought it determined how bountiful the season were. The Romans' god of agriculture is named Saturnus, which is why we now call the planet Saturn, and they also named the day of the week after it, which is now what we call Saturday. This god is often seen by historians as cryptic and complex. This festival is known for celebrating the growing season. 
but he was known for the concept of time, generations, and wealth. He had his own temple and a large cult that surrounded him. Sacrifices were made to his greatness, and he had often been depicted holding a sickle. This tool is not only known for agriculture, but also as a weapon used by the Grim Reaper. And since Saturn has also been understood as a god of time and generations, he might represent death and the passage of time, and his history is more gruesome than his harvesting fortune. In Roman mythology, Saturn was a powerful god who had two mistresses. He had a wife named Ops, or Rhea, whose name meant wealth, abundance, and resources. He also had a lover named Lua, meaning destruction. She was a goddess who received the bloody weapons of enemies destroyed in war. Saturn's two lovers were meant to show his two-sided nature, wealth, and death. Saturn was the original ruler of one of the seven hills of Rome, and in legend he was regarded as the first king of Italy. He brought agriculture and civilization to the land, and he gathered together the unruly race of half-human and half-goats, as well as nymphs. He then scattered them over the mountainside and gave them laws. Under his reign, a golden age came about, and he ruled the nations with perfect peace his greatness was acknowledged across the lands. In Greek mythology, Saturn was also known as Cronus. He was the king of the Titans. But the story of how he won his crown is as important as his rule over the gods. Saturn was the youngest of twelve children. His older brothers were one-eyed giants and one-hundred-armed beasts, so his father sent them to the depths of the underworld because he saw them as monstrosities. Saturn ended up taking a scythe and castrating his father. And once his goal was complete, the realm of heaven separated from earth and he became king. His mother hoped that he would be much more merciful ruler than his father, and she also hoped that he would release her children from the underworld. But Saturn would take no chances, and he kept his eldest brothers locked in the depths. During his rule, the rumor of a prophecy spread. This prophecy said that Saturn would one day be overthrown by one of his sons, so in response, Saturn vowed he would never have children, but fate had something else in mind. Rhea gave birth to their first daughter. She swaddled her in blankets and brought her to Saturn so that he could admire her beauty. He welcomed her with open arms, and he had a smile across his face. He wasn't happy about having a daughter, but he was happy about how he would overcome the prophecy. He took his daughter and swallowed her in one gulp. Despite this, Rhea had several more children, but Saturn ate every single one. But in secrecy, Rhea once again became pregnant with a fifth child, and she couldn't stand losing one more, so she hid the child from Saturn. This son was named Poseidon, and she quietly shipped him off to a remote island where he could live outside of his father's reign. She then brought Saturn an animal swaddled in cloth, and he ate it without noticing it wasn't a real child, and so Poseidon lived on. Once again, Rhea became pregnant, and this child glowed with intense light, and this child was named Zeus. And just like his father, Zeus was the youngest child, but he was also the strongest. Rhea again convinced Saturn to eat a fake child, and she hid Zeus away on the island of Crete inside a cave. The prophecy of Saturn being overgrown was on the verge of becoming true. As Zeus and Poseidon grew older, they found a potion that forced their father to regurgitate all of his siblings that he had eaten. Rhea slipped him the potion, and Saturn clutched at his stomach as he emptied his bowels of his children. All four fully grown children emerged. All of Saturn's children were reunited and were ready to get revenge on their father. A bloody ten-year war ensued. Battles were fought to no end, and no one gained the upper hand. Zeus eventually came to his mother for help. She told him he needed to release Saturn's older brothers from the underworld. When Zeus and his siblings finally made it to their prison, they began crying tears of joy. 
Saturn's brothers had been in prison for so long, they thought they had been forgotten. Finally freed, they gave Zeus and his siblings incredible powers, and with these powers they overthrew Saturn and killed him. As Saturn fell, his children took over the entire kingdom, fulfilling the prophecy, and so became the legend of Saturn. In artwork, Saturn is often depicted eating his children. Wings sprout from his back and his hairline is receded. The wings suggest the speed of time and so does his balding head. Although he's known for good fortune and wealth, he's also known for the never-ending passage of time and the dark actions he took to avoid the prophecy. And much like the planet named after him, its existence is complex and often misunderstood. From afar, the Greeks and Romans saw Saturn as a symbol of plentiful harvest in the night sky. But on closer look, this planet is a scourge of mayhem and storms, peaceful from a distance, chaotic when close, and with time the planet transformed. Saturn is an ever-changing planet with wild storms. These storms can last for days or even weeks, maybe months and they affect the planet on a colossal level. New satellite data has revealed just how dynamic the planet truly is. Clouds whirl and whip beneath the rings. Massive plumes of material soar across its skies. Oval-shaped storms dart across the atmosphere of gas, and violent winds forever surge. Within the gas, it's believed that lightning storms light up the planet, although it's never been witnessed. It's difficult to see this because even on the dark side of Saturn, its rings light up the surface, so this conceals those bright flashes of light. One of the most powerful storms ever witnessed on the planet was what looked like a hurricane at its south pole. The storm was bigger than the entire country of the United States. It measures over two-thirds the diameter of the Earth. The storm even had an eye wall just like a hurricane. It's the only other storm we've seen like this on another planet. At the eye, we can see down into the atmosphere of Saturn. The swirling vortex moves around the South Pole, but its cause is still a mystery. As you float from the South Pole to the North Pole, an even stranger phenomenon reveals itself. First seen in 1979, the Voyager discovered a hexagon above the North Pole, and in 2006, the Cassini craft confirmed that this hexagon was still there. Winds blow at intense speeds around the pole, and a single vortex can fit four Earths inside of it. Clouds surround the vortex at 200 miles an hour, and it's been there for at least 20 years, but the pressure is so intense deep within the planet, it's extremely difficult to study. So instead of being crushed in a whirling vortex, you back away from the surface. Looking out beyond the disk of Saturn's rings, you spot one of its 60 moons. Far from the storms, the moon is safe along its orbit, but it has mysteries of its own. Titan, Saturn's moon, This is the only moon other than our own that we've explored. On January 14th, 2005, the Cassini craft sent a probe to Titan. And what it discovered was far more intriguing than we could have ever imagined. This moon is the size of Mercury and 50% bigger than the Earth's moon. As you look at it from a distance, it looks much like home. The surface of Titan reminds you of Earth's rivers and lake beds, although you see no water. Winds pass over the barren lands and large dunes roll across the surface. Around the equator, these dunes stretch for miles in incredibly vast seas of complex geography. On the surface, it's neither sea nor land, but some sort of muddy substance between a liquid and a solid. And above its strange surface, there exists an extended atmosphere. No other moon in our known solar system has this. Its atmosphere is incredibly thick and massive. It's ten times the mass of Earth, and thicker than air as we understand it. 
Small particles fill the air, giving the entire moon a hazy atmosphere 200 miles thick. So from afar, it looks like the moon could be another ball of gas. But closer to the surface, you see its dunes and ridges. And within this atmosphere are methane and nitrogen. These are the same substances that made up Earth's atmosphere billions of years ago. So many believe that Titan could be an early version of another Earth. And one day, it might provide for life on its surface. But for now, Titan is a cold, lifeless planet. It's nearly 300 degrees below zero, and there's no liquid water. This makes it much different than Earth in its early years. Yet traces of rivers and lake beds have carved the surface. So what flows here if not water? Its hills and mountains are made of methane ice, and the channels are formed by methane rain. It's so cold on Titan that the gas in the atmosphere is liquefied. This rain of gas sculpted the coastlines and rivers, giving Titan its shape. Methane is the main component of natural gas, butane and propane. These are all sources of fuel on Earth, and there's a lot of it. Knowing that there's this much fuel on Titan, this moon could supply all of humanity's fuel for centuries, but retrieving it today is nearly impossible. So for now, Titan continues to be a moon of mystery and intrigue. Not far from Titan, you float along an orbital path around Saturn. Countless moons pass you by. Each one has a distinct size, and while most moons are round, one of Saturn's moons is the first non-spherical moon ever to be discovered in 1848. Hyperion It's a strange sponge-like moon that looks nothing like the others. Hundreds of thousands of holes cover its surface. Its odd shape tumbles around Saturn's orbit. And it's still a mystery as to why it is this shape in the first place. Some believe it might have been a piece of another moon nearby that broke off long ago, but never found a spherical shape. Several more moons orbit around Saturn. Each one is pulled by Saturn's gravity. Some as they pass each other's orbit affect their own trajectories. There are so many moons around this massive planet that they struggle to keep a consistent route in orbit. In time, these moons might collide or fall out of orbit and their travels here are only temporary. It's not long before you run into another much smaller moon, Enceladus, a giant ball of ice and rock. It's only about an eighth of the size of our own moon, and we've never found a celestial body that small with activity on it. Along its southern hemisphere, you see traces of explosions and mist filling the sky. It looks like jets streaming out from its surface. Our best guess is that these are geysers of water, where intense pressure forces pockets of underground water to the surface. Much like Old Faithful at Yellowstone National Park, these shoot water vapor hundreds of feet, possibly thousands, into the air. Massive fissures run 80 miles along the surface of this moon and about 20 geysers blast from these cracks in the surface. This moon is alive with activity, and its center is controlled by Saturn. Back on Earth, we're familiar with the moon affecting our tides. The gravitational pull of the moon changes the Earth. But here on Saturn's moon, the planet pulls on the moon. As it orbits Saturn, gravity pulls on the icy surface. This energy creates heat through friction as the surface creaks and warps, and this heat and gravitational pull lure out the water as it seeps through the surface. You watch as the vapor pours into the air above the icy surface, and you notice something else. As these geysers release material into space, Saturn's gravity doesn't stop here. It continues pulling the material towards the massive planet, through miles and miles of space. This material travels to meet Saturn. Once it arrives, it clings to the E-ring, the farthest ring from the surface, 
nearly 74,000 miles away. And it's believed that this ring was formed almost exclusively from the materials of this moon. By coincidence or not, this ring is the same distance from the moon as it is Saturn's surface. And the size of the particles on the E-ring is the same as the particles released from the moon. So if this moon ever stops ejecting material, this ring of Saturn might disappear forever. Also, these liquid jets might be evidence of water, which makes this moon one of the most mysterious places in our solar system. It's also the lightest object in our solar system, and we've discovered that its surface is covered in freshly fallen snow. As you descend to the surface, the water ejected from these geysers on the South Pole also falls back down towards the surface in a gentle spill of white snow. This moon is a massive ball of ice and snow, a winter landscape of frozen tundra. Beyond its beauty, this is more importantly water, and water is the essence of life. Although the surface appears remote and freezing, evidence of life might exist here. What hides beneath the surface might reveal much more. Mysteries of chemistry within the surface might one day reveal biology. Perhaps a trace of life is concealed by its frozen wonderland. We know the atmosphere contains carbon and nitrogen, and the frictional heat gives the moon its energy. So life might have once existed here, or perhaps one day life might be sustained. The best we can hope for in our solar system is microbial life, but even the discovery of something so small would be monumental. It would change everything we once understood about our solar system. So the satellites are closely watching in hopes of finding traces of life beyond our blue planet. And when we understand celestial bodies like Saturn and its moons, the more we understand about ourselves and our place within this vast universe. You gather all of Saturn's beauty, its moons and surrounding stars within your view. You feel the weightlessness of space as you drift out of its gravitational pull. Towards the sun, you float backwards in the direction of Earth, and you watch the ever-shifting light of the sun cast Saturn's shadows along its rings. Farther, you fall into the sweeping stretch of the cosmos until Saturn becomes just another twinkling dot in the grand canvas of space. Lights from the distant stars fills the void, and soon you descend back to Earth. A bed of grass and soft soil in an open field welcomes you home, and the endless span of space wraps around you like a warm blanket. With that, that concludes our journey to Planet Sleep for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this adventure to Saturn and maybe learned a thing or two. That is if you're still awake. I'll be off for a few weeks as my daughter is about to be born. Thank you all for the love and support. I'll see you soon. But until next time, sleep easy, my friends. Thank you.